Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, Darius Lomachowskis. Today is the 9th of April 2020. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, um, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so um, just before we jump in, as always, a quick mentioning of our GD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to uh, in order not to miss any of our, any of our videos. Um, and of course, our JD Bank website and specifically our JD research page, which we update on a daily basis. So you yeah, feel free to visit us here on jdbank.com and click on the research tab right there, guys, on the top. So, yep, and I believe you can find some useful information here for yourselves. So, um, as always, uh, just a quick update on what's happening here. Uh, globally, in terms of the uh, coronavirus situation, mm, now, the number has uh, drifted already, very, it's already very close to one and a half million people infected. Um, and uh, yep, the total amount of deaths continues to rise, unfortunately. But a uh, good sign of it is that the total amount of recovered people um, are is growing as well. So we'll continue monitoring the situation, but uh, yep, there is a sl it seems that could there could be a sign, a bit of slowing down. Um, of, of course, however, we're not going to get our hopes up too early yet uh, because, <clears throat> well, Again, we know how it sometimes goes. Uh, when everybody gets excited about something, then uh, we get a huge disappointment afterwards. So that's why for now, we're just gonna, uh, yep, continue monitoring the figures and uh, we'll see how the market reacts to all this. Um, for now, the market is, uh, it seems to be pushing a little bit higher and this is where I'm leading now to uh, towards um, these indices. Now, overall, although we are seeing a bit of a uh, retracement here, still the, uh, for example, the German debt here is still in the positive territory. It did try to make an attempt here to break this barrier, the one that I talked about this morning, the 10,590 zone, which is the high of the uh, 7th of April, or in other words, was the is the highest point. Is that let me just double check this. Yes, that's still the um, the highest point of this week. So in other words, we need to see a nice good pop above this barrier in order to get comfortable with further acceleration to the upside. Um, again, as you can see, the market is uh, climbing cautiously to the upside. It's climbing slowly higher. Um, the index is in the positive territory for today, for now. Uh, again, for now. Um, but let's see if that's, this can be maintained. But um, continue observing this upside support line taken from the low of the 19th of March, which in a way, if remains intact, could kind of... Uh, keep showing the direction, uh, the short, at least the short term direction. Um, but <clears throat> in order for us, like I said, to get comfortable with higher levels, we need to see a push above the 10,590 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. Um, in terms of the downside, the drop below the nine, uh, or should I say the psychological 10,000 zone could uh, do the trick here for more sellers. Um, FTSE 100, also quick update. Now I'm not going to spend too much time on this one, as I've mentioned this one this morning. Uh, basically, uh, long story short, we are still keeping a close eye on this 5,815 territory because we need to see a nice good pop above this. And uh, if we see a break above it, uh, then yes, we will aim for higher levels. Now the index came close today to breaking that territory, but uh, failed just by, by few points uh, from hitting that. And uh, now, I mean, we're uh, seeing a, a 
a bit of a correction well we saw a little bit of a, a bit of a correction but as you can see the bulls are still fighting fighting hard and and trying to lift this one higher so keep your eyes on this barrier guys if we do get a nice push above this then this could open the path towards uh, slightly higher levels like for example the 6231 zone which is marked by the high of the 10th of March in terms of the downside we would like to see a drop below the 5350 zone 50 55 uh, fi sorry 50 5350 52 zone roughly around here um, and if we do see a drop below this then yep we could aim for a bit of downside so keep your eyes on this one um, <clears throat> Now then, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys. So um, here, the index uh, yesterday closed in the positive territory. Um, but let's quickly have a look at the cash. In Let me just quickly have a look at the cash index. And um, yep. Mm, it should be pushing higher as well. So that's correct. So it's currently balancing at around 23,460 zones, so roughly around there. So that's not far from uh, where it has closed um, yesterday. So um, of course, we'll keep an eye on the current highest point of this week, which is around the 23,537 zone. Uh, or is that correct? Let me just quickly adjust this. No, that's uh, 23,617, guys. So that's basically the current highest point of um, of this week. Uh, if we do get a push above this, of course, this is straightforward. Um, higher levels could be met. This could open the path towards the uh, next potential target around the 25,000 mark. So... <clears throat> And uh, uh, this is yep, where we could aim for that level. Um, but as I said, we need to see a nice good drop here. Oh, sorry, a nice good push above the uh, 23,617 zone. So keep your eyes on this one. Um, in terms of the downside, um, well, I mean, we'll, we'll continue monitoring this. But if we start seeing a break of this upside line here taken from the low of the 23rd of March, then, well, uh, a bit of downside could be possible here. And uh, for now, Again, it, it seems that the downside it's, is slightly off the table um, from the short-term perspective. Because don't get me wrong, I mean overall we are still uh, we are still looking bearish uh, overall because we are still below the the 200 EMA here, and in a way this could travel a little bit higher. And then uh, if it finds a good resistance near the 100 EMA or the 200 EMA here, then it could start reversing and dropping lower. So that's why, guys, for now be very careful with this one. Um, yes, from the very short term perspective there is a still a possibility for this one to drift higher however um, we'll keep it short and simple if we get a push above the 23,617 mark here then yes we will aim for that uh, psychological 25,000 zone and then we'll take it from there in terms of the downside we need to see a break of this upside line and uh, then yep we could consider we could start considering uh, maybe slightly deeper extensions to the downside uh, UK oil so which is uh, Brent oil now um, I talked about the uh, WTI this morning and basically uh, there's not much activity right now because we are waiting for um, for the OPEC plus meeting which should happen today so hopefully we can get something out of it and uh, that's why there's not much activity here in uh, in oil in the oil market and basically it's stuck so uh, if we look at the four hour chart you can see here um, let me just adjust a few of these levels guys now this was the lowest point that it managed to reach and that was roughly around the 21.64 mark from which it kind of reversed and pushed higher um, then the um, the index started climbing higher uh, let me just get clear up this chart a little bit and managed to get back above the 31.30 mark which as you can see previously acted as good area of support then resistance and now it's it's taking the role of the support level as well again um, now we're keeping close eye on this barrier here on the upside the 36.30 10 zone but what you could do here as well uh, you could also keep your eyes on this little area around the 34 um, or actually no let me just double check this very quickly that 34.90 zone so basically as you can see uh today the um the uh, the commodity wanted to uh break this level here but uh, failed to do so it came close to it and then reversed back to the downside so in a way basically we can see that uh from the beginning of this week uh the 
uh, the, the 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 commodity uh, the commodity is stuck here in this little range um, and uh, this is roughly between the 34.90 level on the um, on the upside and the 31 th uh, let me just quickly Put this one here and 31.30 uh, on the downside. So basically, long story short, guys, we need to see a clear breakthrough one of these levels, uh, one of these sides of this range, and uh, then we could consider a further short-term directional move. Because even if we get a push higher, uh, still we do have the 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 200 EMA here on the four-hour chart, which also could provide a bit of resistance. But if that gets over, uh, that gets broken, then well, I mean, higher levels could be met, and we will start aiming to the upside up until this downside line taken from the high of the 7th of January. So something to consider, something to keep an eye on. So yep, guys, be careful and uh, probably don't try to um, predict too much into the future. And probably given the difficult circumstances right now, try to wait for the announcement and then uh, see what you can do here. Um, Gold. Uh, also, a quick update. So you can. See, this is what I talked about uh, recently, basically, and uh, what I was saying that gold. Um, it kind of continue, continued to uh, balance near this 1645 zone, and you can see that this area um, acted as a good area of support from which the commodity, the precious metal, is now popping higher. Um, we are going to be looking for uh, this level here right now, the 1680, 81 zone, roughly around there, and. Uh, if we get a nice good break above this, then of course this could open the path towards that psychological 1700 level or slightly above that, the 1703 territory, uh, which is basically near the highest point of March this year, or in other words, near the highest point of this year. Um, so long story short, guys, for now we are more bullish than bearish. Um, we are aiming for this 1680, 80, 81 zone, but if that gets broken, then yep, this could lead towards uh, higher levels, and we could aim for that uh, 1700 or the 1703 mark. So keep your eyes on this one. Um, in case this suddenly reverses back down and drops below the 1645, then yep, uh, Deep, slightly deeper extensions here to the downside could be possible up until this upside support line taken from the low of the 21st of May. And then after that, we'll take it from there. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, I haven't looked at this one for quite a while. And uh, here, basically, you can see that uh, the crypto together with the rest of the cryptos is traveling higher, is pushing nicely to the upside. Um, however, it's kind of, kind of, let's say, looking at this daily chart, you can see that it's currently finding good resistance near the 100-day EMA here, uh, shown as the green line. Uh, it didn't even reach the 200 EMA, shown as the black line. So, and uh, but the good, good side from the good side is the fact that it's still trading above this upside support line taken from the low of the 13th of March. So, in other words, guys, for now, where we're looking here for is mm, taking the current situation. Uh, we would like to see, in order to aim for higher levels, we would like to see a push above the 280.50 zone, uh, which is the uh, the current highest point of this week. And if we do see a push above this, then yep. And, and if it also pushes above the 200 EMA here, then yes, we could start considering higher levels, like for example, these here, like the 352, 52, 50, oh, sorry, 353 mark, um, which is the high of the 6th of March. And uh, then yep, uh, or in other words, actually the highest point of March to be more precise. Um, and then, yes, we could take it from there. So, long story short, guys, uh, this is a very interesting situation, very interesting spot. So, um, if we do get a push above this barrier, uh, then yes, it could. Uh, it, if, if we do get a push above the 280.50, then yes, we could start considering higher levels. Now, in between these two, uh, there is a little obstacle right here. So, so this is somewhere you should be a, very, a little bit careful. That's basically that psychological 300 mark, which is also which also acted as a good area of support back on and the 26th of February and the 28th of February. So uh, we'll keep an eye on this one. But if that is just seen as a temporary obstacle here for the bulls, then yep, further acceleration to the upside could be possible. Um, in terms of the downside, well, pretty straightforward. We need to see a break of this. Uh, um, a break of this uh, this upside support line and uh, then yes we could uh, see a further drift lower so keep your eyes on this one guys for now um, it is correcting right now it is correcting to the downside a little bit uh, that's quite okay I would say healthy uh, still healthy um, 
but if this upside line starts getting broken then yep uh, further declines are possible guys and this is where we could uh, start aiming for these levels uh, which were previously seen as good support levels um, like the 225 or even the 202 or let's just say even rounded up towards the 203 mark so uh, keep your eyes on this one guys uh, GBPCHF just wanted to quickly show you something here and probably this is uh, uh, better to show on the four hour chart so basically we are having a nice um, potential setup here now let me just show you what I'm talking about so first of all uh, we are balancing near this key resistance uh, which is around the 1.2087 zone um, we need to see a nice good strong pop above this in order to aim for higher levels because if we do get a nice good push above this then yes this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, well next potential targets could be uh, around here uh, around the 1.2325 zone somewhere around here or even actually a little bit higher let me just just quickly captured this one. There we go. Uh, that's around the 20, 1.2337 zone. So that's where the next potential area of resistance could come in. Uh, come in. Uh, next strong resistance level. Um, we are also trading uh, above this little short-term um, upside support line here and taken from the low of the uh, 30th of March. So basically, uh, for now, we're uh, we're very careful and cautious. If we get a drop below this upside support line, uh, don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean that this is going to start uh, reversing to the downside because we would still need to see uh, at least a drop below this little level around the 1.19 six zone which is the low of the 6th of April um, and uh, in other words that's the uh, the lowest the current lowest point of um, of of April uh, there we go managed to uh, <laughs> mention this one finally so uh, in other words like I said guys if we do get a break of this uh, short-term upside support line it's which is a bit tentative um, here as you can see then yes we there is a possibility for this one to drift lower however uh, just to, for that extra confirmation a drop below the 1.1906 zone uh, could do the trick for more sellers because this would also place the rate below the 100 EMA here on the four-hour chart but again, that's the alternative scenario for now. The main scenario is to the upside. However, as I've mentioned, in order for us to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels, then yes, we need to see a push above this uh, 1.2087 uh, zone, and then we could start aiming for higher levels. Uh, GBP USD. Again, a uh, quite similar situation here. Uh, we are still waiting again with uh, for a break above this barrier 1.2485 zone. I've previously uh, re this week I've talked about this this pair. Basically, that's what we're uh, waiting here. We need to see a nice good confirmation break above the 1.2485 before we could consider higher levels. Uh, for now, uh, we cannot really talk about the upside until we get that break. Um, USDCHF. Uh, USDCHF, I also looked at this one yesterday, um, and um, or if I'm not mistaken, yesterday or the day before yesterday, now I need to refresh my memory on this, but what I was talking about was this this little barrier here, because we were trading above the, the this downside line here, uh, and there is a, there was a good chance for this one to drift further north, however, it still found good resistance near the 0 0.9797 mark, and as you can see, it kind of slid back down, and... Um, drifted lower and is now back below this downside line so um, however it remains above this short-term tentative upside support line taken from the low of the 9th of March so in other words um, we cannot really talk about the downside yet until we get a break of this upside line and even so I, just for that extra confirmation, we would like to see a drop below this level right here, the 0 0.9553 mark, which is the low of the uh, 2nd of April, and then, yep, we could aim for lower levels for now. We're keeping close eye on this one. It is very tricky. Basically, we are looking, uh, we're waiting for a breakthrough one of these highlighted areas, guys. Um, and uh, if we do eventually see a breakthrough one of these highlight er highlighted areas, then yes, we will aim for a further short term directional move. Uh, so keep your eyes on this one. USD CAD. Now, uh, this one is quite interesting, and this is what I talked about this morning. So let me just double check. So we got the data. Um, this is what I talked about. So initial jobless claims. So <clears throat> the initial jobless claims came out, um, well, 
worse than uh, than expected and uh, well I mean it didn't quite really hit the um, the previous record and let me just quickly double check that um, yes it didn't quite hit the previous record but it was uh, very close to it it came very close um, and basically now we can see that um, the dollar kind of is kind of on the weaker side still trying to remain in the positive territory but uh, is kind of declining a little bit um, because well but the only thing which is not allowing it to decline that much is the fact that we had the Canadian employment change figure now I think that one came out as a record low um, and let me just quickly yes that came out as a record low um, at 1000 and one well actually 1010 point seven K in the minus so well I mean basically basically both figures are uh, are bad uh, the same as from the US US and the Canada so that's why we are it seems that this uh, this pair cannot really decide on which way to go uh, based on uh, the two data sets that's why probably the main driver here right on this on this pair will be uh, the outcome from the OPEC plus meeting so something to consider something to keep an eye on that this is what I talked about this morning basically we need to see a drop below the uh, 1.3986 zone before we could aim for lower levels for now it's still trading around here so let's wait and uh, see how this is gonna play out if we get a break through this downside line here then yes we will start uh, aiming maybe for some higher levels so for now guys wait for this one don't rush into it and uh, let's see how this is gonna play out after the OPEC plus meeting um, EuroCAD, a similar story here. Um, the only thing that uh, is that the euro is slightly on the stronger side and it's trying to make its way higher. But previously, when I when I talked about EuroCAD, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this support zone between roughly between the 1.5207 and the 1.5246 marks. Um, you can see that the 0 0.5207 acted as a very good area of support uh, from which kind of the pair is rebounding a little bit here. However, we're also forming somewhat of a possible uh, descending triangle here. So in a way, if we do get a drop below the 1.5207, then well, deeper extensions to the downside could be possible and finally euro usd here so um this is what i talked about this morning um basically what i was saying that until we're stuck here in this little range uh we will remain neutral but if it starts pushing higher pushing back above the 1.0888 or even better the 1.09 uh, 26 mark here which is the current highest point of this week um then yes we might consider some higher levels for now it's the one positive aspect is that it is pushing, trying to make its way back above this 1.0888 zone. Um, but still, we, what we're going to be keeping a close eye on will be this barrier right here, the current highest point of uh, this week. And that's roughly around the 1.0926 mark. So keep your eyes on this one. In terms of the downside, pretty straightforward. The same idea remains still uh, valid. The We need to see a drop below the 1.0777 in order to um, aim for and in order to aim for lower levels guys so that's why for now keep your eyes on this so i really hope you found it useful guys thank you very much for sticking around and watching until the end um if you want to join me uh if you want to join me tomorrow morning or should i say if you want to catch my video uh tomorrow morning my traders espresso that's uh just a little bit after six o'clock uh, GMT time and then yep we'll pick up on some of these instruments some new ones and uh, we'll see how everything has played out um, it should be quite an interesting day tomorrow guys so yep um, let's see how tonight everything shapes up uh, probably I would say be very careful if you have already traded I would probably recommend just to uh, stay away and just maybe just to kind of uh, observe the situation um, and uh, if but if you do want to let's say try to take advantage of the uh, current uh, craziness in the market then well always have your stop loss in place guys uh, just to be on the safe side so thank you very much 
for watching and listening. Thank you very much, guys, for everything. Um, and, uh, yep, catch my video tomorrow uh, at around 6 o'clock uh, GMT time in the morning. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Thank you very much, guys, and bye-bye.